There's a, a story out that came out this weekend from a DHS insider. And it was written about in Canada. And this insider came to a Canadian uh, journalist. He said, if anybody thinks on what's going on right now with all this surveillance of American citizens is, um, is to fight some foreign enemy, they're delusional. If pe- people think this scandal can't get any worse, it will hour by hour, day by day. This has the ability to bring down our national leadership, the administration, and other senior elected officials working in collusion with the administration, both Republican and Democrats. That's why you're going to see the John McCain's and the Lindsey Graham's and everybody else. They are involved in this. People within the NSA, the Department of Justice, and others, um, they know who they are. And they need to come forth with the documentation of policy and practice in their possession. Disclose what they know. Fight what's going on. And just do their jobs. I have seen, I've never seen anything like this ever. This present administration is going after leakers, media sources, anyone and everyone, and is suspecting them of, quote, betrayal. That's what they're calling it now. Betrayal, he says. Can you imagine the size of their cojones? The administration considers anyone telling the truth about Benghazi, the IRS, or hell, you name the issue, betrayal. Okay. The reporter says, I know all of this already. You don't know Jack. This is bigger than you imagine, bigger than anyone can imagine. This administration is collecting names of sources, whistleblowers, and their families. Names of media sources and everybody they talk to or have talked to. They have already a huge list. If you're not working for MSNBC or CNN, you're probably on that list. If you're a website owner with a brisk readership and a conservative bent, you're on that list. It's political dissent list. Not an enemy threat list. That's exactly what I mean by saying being on that list. It means there will be censorship under the color of authority of anyone in the U.S. who is attempting to expose what's going on in our name. It's about controlling any damning information that is reaching epidemic proportions, damage control to the extreme. It's about the upcoming censorship of the Internet in the name of national security. The plans are already in place. These latest reports about spying eyes have turned this administration and others connected to it into something very, very dangerous. They feel cornered and threatened. I am hearing about the same plans they have to shut down the flow of information that is impacting them uh, or implicating them of wrongdoing. Time is short. First, they intend to use the Justice Department to silence journalists like the Rosen case, but they won't stop there. They will use a host of national security policies, laws, letters, whatever it takes to take out the biggest threats. Next, they will use some sort of an excuse, an eternal threat, uh, an external threat. And I believe it will be the combination of an economic collapse and a Mideast war that will begin in Syria to throttle the information that is accessible on the Internet. And you know what? People will believe it. Based on what I've seen, most of which I have not seen, the DHS is coordinating efforts with other federal agencies to begin to threaten American citizens with incarceration for non-compliance. You know the old talk of color-coded lists? Well, this is what they'll be using. People exposing the truth about Benghazi, killing the U.S. dollar, even those questioning the president. His legal status and eligibility to be president would be a target. They've had five long years to get to this point. The ugly truth is these policies and practice did not start under this president, but long before. This is about killing our constitutional republic, the murder of our country, and the stripping of our rights. While many have been preoccupied with one issue, few have seen the bigger issue. This is the end game. This is for all the marbles. Now, this is a story coming out from an unnamed source in a Canadian, in a Canadian newspaper. I will tell you this. I found that, and I sent that immediately to my global information desk in um, New York. And this is the response I have. Glenn, I can't tell you about this source or this story, but I can tell you this. One, our sources have been increasingly afraid and have insisted in some cases on similar clandestine arrangements to to deliver information. I've already told you that we have had people that have passed us, They have told us to meet someplace in the middle of, you know, a mall or a park. And we are not to recognize anything. We're supposed to stand there and stand by a garbage can. 
Somebody will come. They will drop something right in the top of the garbage. And one of the uh, one of these meetings, they were bumped by this source, and all they said was, "That can get me killed. Don't keep. Uh, don't. Um, what was it? That could get me killed. Something like um, um, keep me protected. This is spy stuff. This is spy novel stuff. This is stuff that doesn't happen." This is not normal. Two, they have avoided all email, cell phones from the get-go, and that is becoming even more the case of late. They have reported, and this is really important, they have reported increased security and scrutiny on their jobs, along with warnings of what happens, and this is in quotes, to those that commit treason, end quote. If our administration is telling people in in government agencies, you better be aware of what happens to those who commit treason. That is execution, so you know. We now have a government threatening execution for those people who might be whistleblowers. Three, they are uniformly panicked, and they feel what info they have has got to get to the broadcast, uh, get, get out to be bro- uh, broadcast to the broadest possible group as quickly as possible. They are growing very frustrated by the lack of response from the American people and are becoming ex- increasingly bold. See the Guardian and WAPO leaks. They are, f- they have a fear that they are about to be shut down. Four. Many know far more than they have shared, and they are trying to figure out ways, as are we, to insulate them so the information can be revealed. I have asked you for your prayers. I have asked you um, to support our organization. I will tell you, as I told you um, uh, last hour, because of just the IRS, people do not want to... um, do business on in some cases don't want to do business with us and these are people that i i have always thought were patriots but they have said i don't want any trouble that's going to get more i mean if you if it's hard now guys it's only going to get worse you're not you're not ready we work with people on a daily basis who mean it unfortunately i do my life, my fortune, and my sacred honor. It is not something that I have ever seriously thought I would ever be asked to give. But in the last six years, I've had to make a decision. My life, my fortune, and my sacred honor. I will not be part of of whatever it is we're creating, it won't be built in my name. I will not be eternally damned for playing any role in the loss of man's freedom. I won't. I want my name clearly on the record books, the eternal record books, as someone who stood. I will give my children probably damn my children in some regard short term but i will give my children and their children the opportunity to be proud that my grandfather never picked up a gun my grandfather always preached peace my grandfather stood my grandfather started speaking out as soon as he figured it out and he never sat down against all the odds And I work with people in this building and in New York that do the same thing every day. And we have whistleblowers that are doing the same. But we need your help. 